Hey there, welcome back to the Path to Zion podcast. PathToZion.com is where you can send your friends and families and enemies and neighbors, your high school pals you haven't talked to for 30 years, PathToZion.com. If you'd like to reach out to us, you can do so easily. Send us an email at PathToZionPodcast at gmail.com. That's PathToZionPodcast at gmail.com. Oh man, well, things have been pretty busy in the, in the realm of spiritual things, of things that God is teaching me in my household. You know, I, I had a, a phone conversation yesterday with some family and, and it basically unfolded to say, you know, I'm, I'm just not sure I'm a, a man... Who, who continues to use the word seasons. You know, the season we're in, the season I'm in. I think we could just call enduring, enduring together alongside the people of God. Just like write that on the top of every month of the calendar for the rest of our days. I just really feel called to do that. I feel called to just walk in his ways as they unfold. And I know that there will be seasons, I guess, seasons of certain specific things that I will be able to go back and check my journal. And, you know, man, I remember when, when the Lord was really convicting my heart and, and teaching me this or this. Yes, I know that will be true in measure. But I'm just I'm just at a place where I absolutely do not Label things good, bad, hard, easy. You know, it's just... I continue to just walk with this clarity for some reason that this life... You know, it's foggy this morning as I'm driving. And I'm just... That is my life. It is a vapor that... It's just gone. And see, now I'm driving up a little higher elevation and it's clear as can be. And y'all, that's our life. So like whatever you're going through, whatever you're experiencing, whatever it is that is what you call hard or easy, I would just encourage you to just exhale and lean into the Father. Period. No matter what it is. Stressful, anxiety-inducing, Whether your bank account is overflowing or empty. Whether things in your home and family are exactly how you wish they would be, even in a right godly sense. Or it's a mess. Our our challenge is the same. To be a dependent people who are looking to God to be strong. We are weak. Here's the thing, right? We're all weak. <laughs> but the key is, is in the admittance. The key of weakness is in the recognition. All of humanity are weak, but what, what is the majority of humanity, what are they convinced of? I'm not weak. Everything I need to do, any task... To accomplish any goal is somehow just within me. And if you don't believe that, you can pay life coaches and buy books and go to seminars and take classes to just convince yourself that you and yourself are enough. But friend, you're not. You were not intended to be enough. Your sufficiency comes from your Creator. No one is exclusive. There are no anomalies who do not need the Creator's hand, strength, and gift of purpose in their life. It is for all of us. Okay, so it's 5.45 in the morning. I'm driving out. Once a week I leave out early. And, you know, where we live, if you listen to this program at all, you know we live out in the country in the middle of nowhere. 
the town that I drive through, um, well, there's not much there. There's a dollar store, two gas stations, a pizza place, a restaurant that's, that's somewhat famous in this region, but is really awful. And there's this little strip building. I, I won't say strip mall because then you're already way out of, of properly understanding this town I'm talking about. But there's this little building, you know, with a couple office size places, you know, divided up. And one of them is, <laughs> it's kind of funny, one of them is a little fitness center. I'm not sure who uses it. I'll see a car there on random occasion, but on these mornings when I leave out at 5.30, I see, of course, it's dark, and in this fitness center has large windows in the front, and, and there's always a television that's on in there. And I, I don't know whether it's because we haven't had a TV for so many years or just I things grab my attention and it's hard for me to stay focused on things still as a mature adult. <laughs> but it always gets my attention. I have the same problem in restaurants. I mean, I have the same problem that I tell my son is, son, I know that that television is demanding your attention. Stop looking at it, honey. <laughs> Son, stop looking at the TV. Well, they grab our attention. They want to arrest our gaze. And so I was just thinking about that for a few miles as I drove past it, and I'm just on my way heading south this morning. And this is no revelation, and this is, of course, not anything that I don't share in some vein with great regularity here. But we have got to continue to and get it ingrained into our minds the power of distraction. I was talking with a brother a few days ago and he was sharing how he just fights this compulsion to just quit his job and just go to the woods to, to commune with the Father for 30 days. Now I know he's saying that out of emotion. We've all had that. If we have truly encountered Yahweh God, we've all had that feeling, right? Of like, I just want everything to stop and I just want to know him. I just want to, I just want to talk to him. I want to listen to him. I want to study. I want to fast. I want to pray. I just want to get away from the world. And so I get that. I often have that feeling myself. Now, my life is just structured very odd, especially presently. I have endless time available to me. I won't get into all of the whys about my life right now. That's irrelevant. But right now, I have an abundance of time to pray, to study, to read to meet other people, to talk and, and share testimonies of what the Lord's saying, to work on these podcasts, to do studies that are formal, that may or may not ever even make it on here. But like my life has a lot of room for that presently. But, but the principle is the same whether we're busy or whether we're not. Because the, the real thing that we must do when we feel that 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 beckoning to come out, we must respond somehow. Now, can that man quit his job and go to the woods for 30 days? Probably not. And let's just be honest, he probably won't. Even if he could, he, he probably won't do that. Well, why not? There's a lot of very good, responsible, good reasons for that. And there are just limitations we put on our own life because, well, we got to walk in common sense, right? We need to be responsible, mature, grown men, husbands and fathers. You can't just live like that. And listen, that's just what I want to speak to for, for merely a few moments today. We have to be careful that we ourselves, who, who many believers that, that I personally know now, you know, that I, we have to be careful, right? We're not talking about the broad the broad net of wide-way mass Christianity. 
they clearly say, you know what? Hey, we, we're just worldly. <laughs> we're worldly. We know it. And, you know, let's just not talk about it. This is what I prefer. This is who I want to be. I'm free in Jesus. Everybody else is doing it. We all look the same, even though we all look like the world and live like the world, but we all look the same, so it must be okay. Well, that's a whole different category of of person, and that's not what I'm referencing here. I'm talking about the ones who want to keep the commands of God, to walk in His ways, to love Him, to literally give themselves to all that He's asking of them. To the greatest measure that they can. So here's the challenge, right? Okay, well, what can we do then? What can we do? Maybe this humongous bite of extreme will not be possible for us. It may not be possible for you to quit your job of 70 hours a week, go get a 20-hour a week job at Subway and still provide for your family. Now, there's a bunch of questions, practically speaking, within that. Well, do you need that house? Do you need those brand new cars? Do you need cable? You know what I'm saying? We, we say that we're too limited and we're too structured and too restrained by what? By what we must have. And so all I'm saying is, it at least begs the question that we must present to ourselves in honesty to say, well, are there some things I could do without? Because listen, right now in my life, I hear men saying, I just want to be more disconnected from the world. I just feel a call to just, I would, I paraphrase this, I just want to come out some more. Well, listen. If we can really rightly in humility share with other people something we have done that has been fruitful of of being an example of what they're expressing, they're desiring, friends, I'm saying I've done that. We have literally come out from the world for years now, and it has literally changed the entire function and order of our home, which has changed even the trajectory of my now eight-and-a-half-year-old son's life. He is dramatically different than children like him his age, Christian children. Well, why is that? He doesn't know movies. He doesn't know cartoons. He will not shoot your son in the head with a Nerf gun and yell, die, die, die. He's not violent. He's tender. I... I could go on and on. I don't want to. I don't want to sound like I'm, I'm, just promoting my household. What I'm promoting is a response to the call from the Father to come out, to come out from among them and what? Be separate, be different. Holiness, as we often talk on here, is not just folding your hands and sitting quiet in a sanctuary. Holiness is a people that when you are seen, whoa, those people are distinct. The way they dress, the way they carry themselves, the way they speak, which admittedly is a weakness of mine that the Lord is correcting me on in this very second. I need to be more self-controlled. I need to be more tempered. Clear as a bell, yes and amen. Confession, that is my issue. Even if the Lord gives me an oracle straight from his mouth, I have got to learn to temper how I bring that out and share that with any other human being. That is my issue. I am in no way flawless. But but y'all, the Lord has brought us to a place that is literally a gift from him where our house is ordered. And part of that, to go back to where I started, is we don't have a television. And I know everybody wants to say, well, there's no point in being legalistic. The, the real issue is you just don't master it. If we just mastered it, it wouldn't be an issue. Well, I get that, and that's fine and well and good. And, and I'm not saying that that's impossible. I'm not. All I'm saying is if I'm not holding a triple whopper with cheese in my hand, there is no chance in the whole wide world I'm ever going to eat it. 
Okay, I'm just, I'm just speaking that that might be true for you, but that is not true for the majority. I don't see that as true for the majority. Well, we, we pretty much only watch this, but we do watch movies where people are getting shot in the head. And we do watch movies where, you know, people are sometimes not really dressed the way that I would like people to be dressed. But, you know, we're trying. Now listen, I'm not being hard and I'm not being legalistic. I'm just saying if we truly want to be set-apart men with set-apart distinct holy homes, friends, we have got to look different. And how do we look different? We make decisions along the way that separate us. That mark us. Why did I first bring up the television back there at that fitness center? Because it's just always on. It's just always on. You, you, you could probably go by there at 2 in the morning and it's broadcasting a message. And friends, this is the way of the world. The world is literally broadcasting To anyone who will give an ear, listen to our perspective. Look through our eyes. Turn your ear towards our cry. And listen, we we don't even have time to get into all the parables. We don't have time to get into even, even just what we'll call just lady wisdom who's in the corner of the street crying out for any who will listen. But as I've shared, like the Lord gave me a vision, man, eight, nine years ago? Man, it's been 10 years ago, 11. Where there's a season in my life, see, I still have seasons and I had seasons, (laughs) where I was just really wrestling with my carnality. I was wrestling with the lusts of my flesh. I was in another phase, another level, if you will, of God just purifying me, calling me deeper into being holy and consecrated and set apart. And I just remember that that in this vision, I was walking along this, this city street, this large city. And, and there were these tables set up all along the street on the sidewalk. And, and, and the tables were covered with just worldly goods. I won't get into everything to, to make it clear. You get the gist. And everyone at these tables was, they were yelling. I mean yelling. There were speakers on the tables blaring music. There were 80 inch flat screen TVs flashing images faster than my eye could keep up with. On both sides. Shoulder to shoulder. The this, this street was somewhat dark, maybe around dusk as far as daylight goes. Still light enough to see movement and activity. But dark, just barely dark enough that maybe just a little less than a block away in a corner, I saw a faint light. And I saw this small table in the corner, a little square table, and there was this older woman behind it. And I could tell that she was saying something, even from a distance, but I couldn't hear her. To to paraphrase what I saw, I walked past all of this noise, all of this chaos that demanded my attention and the closer I got the more I realized she was calling me she was crying out wisdom was crying out in the street but I had to go to her now the closer I got to her the more I heard her and the more faint all the nonsense around me became now listen they didn't decrease their volume they didn't decrease their volume. Listen, I've okay, I would submit I feel the Lord saying something within this. Along some other lines of stuff I'm writing and studying presently. The world did not decrease their volume, friends. 
I changed my position. The noise of the world never got quieter by their doing. But because I was moving through them with my focus and trajectory set on woman wisdom, I began to hear her calling me. I began to hear her beckoning me to her closer and closer. And as I did that, as I responded to that, all of the noise and clamor and and chaos of the world was growing strangely dim. Friends, my regeneration experience was exactly that right there. Nearly 15 years ago, the Lord took me to such a deep place in Him, I literally didn't know upside from down. I didn't know left from right. My entire world was like I had been removed physically and placed literally within some other realm. I am not exaggerating. When I was transferred from the dominion of darkness to the kingdom of the sun, the kingdom of light, y'all, I literally was like I was picked up and not just put in another country. I was placed on some other planet in the solar system. Why? Nothing of my doing other, other than responding in repentance. Because what? The goodness of God leads to repentance, and repentance leads us to the Father. His goodness leads us to repentance, and that repentance, should we respond, leads us unto Himself. And so may it be noted that the world is going to be the world. The church is so enamored with the evil of this age, so captivated by the evil of this age. Mainstream Christianity, patriotic Christian America is panting out of breath entirely because they can't speak enough about the evil of this age and the darkness that's advancing. We have to do something. We have to do something. This is a, quote, Christian nation. Friends, if we were a Christian nation, we would not look the way we do. Somebody has got to wake up and realize this fact. God created a nation out of a man, and the name of the nation was Israel. And the last time I checked, Israel is not a county in the United States. (laughs) The ways of the world will continue to advance. And so that is why my position is that our weapons are not, our weapons of our warfare are not carnal. That's why that actually means something to me. Because my natural ideas, my natural response to a natural world condition that is fueled by darkness and evil that is unseen, man, our weapons have got to be appropriate to what we're actually fighting against. We're not fighting with humanity alone. We're not fighting with the gay and lesbian agenda alone. And so if we continue to operate only according to our natural understanding, responding to natural concerns, we will have natural results. Which is what? Men fighting with men. It's elementary understanding. We're just going to have men fighting with men. And that's all we see that is this age. Men hate men. As I said in that Freedom and Liberty series that I did back in July, we should not call this the United States of America, y'all. We are not united in any way. Brother hates brother just like it was prophesied in the scriptures. Men who work alongside one another even in the marketplace, if one is red and one is blue, they hate one another. We've got to stop functioning according to what? According to what this worldly culture is broadcasting to the ears of anyone who will listen. So listen, friends, in conclusion, take the steps necessary to turn off the noise 
of this age. Be extreme. Do something. Do something. Listen, if you for most households, if you turned off your TV for a month, albeit not that much, that would be extreme. I remember for us how hard that was to do. But listen, our lives were instantaneously filled with an abundance of time. Whoa. I had no idea, right? Just like that television in the window of that small fitness center. The world, man, her broadcast is live 24-7 and there are millions of channels. There's millions of stations broadcasting the news of this age. And all I'm saying is we have got to take a constant assessment of what in any, even in unforeseen areas now, we might be ingesting the temporal, natural, carnally driven messages of this age, of the patterns of this world. I think it would do us good now to continue to cut off all signals that are getting into our cells and to our homes. Friend, don't be afraid of being legalistic. I'm I'm a proponent of sometimes you have to do something to realize your heart's condition towards it. I know that a lot of people, most everybody I meet, says, well, if, if you just do it out of your own unction and out of your own efforts, God cannot empower it to perform a function in your life because it was sourced in you, a.k.a. legalism. If God asks me for something, I'll give it up, they say. I've heard that for years and years. If God asks me for it, friend, I'll let it go. But I continue to promote the, the possibility that what if you don't even know the, the, the weight and substance a matter has in your life until you put it on the altar of sacrifice as a living sacrifice unto the Father. Can we not test and weigh some things? Why? Because my heart is towards Him. My heart, my entire cardia, my innermost being, what makes me me is desiring to be found pleasing to my Father in such a manner, such a great magnitude, that I take things in my life and say, here it is, Lord. Search me. Know me. See if there be any wicked way in me or any wicked way that I put my hands to, my eyes upon, or give my ears towards. I think this would help us mature. I think this would help the body mature and come out from among them and be separate. Y'all, that's what we're called to do. We should look different. If you line up 20 people, 10 are worldly, carnal, natural, unregenerate, and 10 are born again, born of the Spirit, born of the water, in Yeshua Messiah, living no longer as themselves, but as as the Messiah within them. Y'all, I'm just telling you, 30 seconds with those 20 people, you should be able to quickly draw a line of 10 and 10. This is such a hard sell for Christianity today. I'm constantly surprised at, at when I promote this just in any measure that I believe you should be like, oh boy, 10, 10, next, easy, easy. These are a marked people. These are. Wow, these people right here, they don't look like these 10 here. We should, I've, I'm convinced that's how we should be. I think that that is evidence that we are in the lineage of the people of God. We are Yahweh's people. We don't look the same. We don't dress the same. We don't eat the same. We don't watch the same programs. We don't listen to the same music. We don't talk the same. We don't sing the same. We don't demand the same rights. We don't order our lives the same as those within the world. It should be distinct. So friends, what today can you do? Ask the Lord, not me. What, is, what would the Lord have you present to Him 
on the off, the offering table of sacrifice. Why? To be more intimate with your creator. To be towards him more in your heart. In the hearts of your children, in the heart of your wife, your husband. That we might know him as he is and be holy as he is holy. This is our goal. This is our trajectory. Amen.